New York Dan here for the Ben's Products channel. Whenever there's a maritime issue related to shipping or cruising, I'm somewhat of an expert on this topic, and I usually cover it with either a live stream or some type of video. Uh, what happened last night with the bridge collapse in Baltimore, the container ship Dolly, operated by Maersk Line, crashed into the bridge and it's amazing how that bridge just crumbled like it was built with some kind of little like modeling plastics just went completely out just from the ship slowly hitting it but if you look at the scale of these things the ship is over a thousand feet long and the inertia of that ship is immense um the ship is built very heavy to be able to uh, carry so many containers on it. Now, what I want to get into, the reason why this happened, which a lot of people may not understand, inside the ship, these container ships are built for efficiency. They have a huge diesel like this right here behind me, a huge diesel engine. That's several stories high. These engines operate at low speed. To make the ship run as efficiently as possible, these engines have a direct drive. They spin the propeller shaft directly. At the end of the propeller shaft, you have the propeller. It goes at the same exact RPM revolutions per minute as the engine spins. Now, on a lot of ships that carry passengers, such as cruise ships, they have a different system. They have several engines spinning generators, and they actually power the propeller shaft with electric motors. This gives them a lot more versatility and a lot more backup. On the container ship, they usually, even though these ships are larger than a lot of cruise ships and other vessels, they usually are powered by just one engine. The reason for this is efficiency. If you have only one propeller, it's more efficient. Once you have multiple propellers and multiple engines, you start losing your efficiency. These ships are all about transporting the most amount of cargo for the least amount of money and the least amount of fuel. So they usually have one engine like this. It's driven. It's actually powered with a fuel, heavy fuel oil, they call it. Bunker C is another name for it. It's very thick fuel like road tar. And it burns in an engine that's just massive, several stories high. Now, the catch is, okay, to run the ship, you also need electric power. How to do this the most efficient way possible is to have a shaft-driven generator. That is a generator that would be driven right off the shaft of this engine here behind me. And what they basically have is at one end of the engine, or perhaps in line with the propeller shaft, you have a generator system that's linked up to the engine to provide power for the ship. Here's the catch. This is the most efficient way to do it by far. You only have one engine turning. You have a very direct drive propeller there's no slippage there's no loss of power um when you have several engines running generators and then you have electric motors you're actually losing a lot of your power through inefficiencies it's not a direct drive okay long story short when you have this engine powering your generator and your prop directly you got very high efficiency now, the problem at the, with the dolly, the container ship that went into the bridge, apparently they were having an engine problem and they radioed in that they had lost steering. 
um, moments before this happened, minutes before this happened, the disaster. Okay, what I saw, what I observed in the video is the lights went out in the ship a few times as it was approaching the bridge. And what I believe happened is they had a problem with either the shaft-driven generator cutting out or possibly the entire engine stalled out. And when that happens, if you lose power from the shaft-driven generator, you're going to lose all control of the ship. That's why the lights on the ship went off. Now, there is an emergency generator on these ships, but usually the emergency generator, it's a smaller diesel generator. It only provides emergency lighting circuits. It's very limited. It takes a little bit of time for that to fire up. There should be, though, an, an automatic system that does get that generator running if the ship loses power. And I would imagine there should be a system that the, would enable the steering gear of the ship to possibly work on emergency generator power. This only makes sense for safety. But in the Dolly's case, when the, when the lights went out, it appears that they lost total control of the rudder. They were not able to steer the ship. That's how it got off course. Um, the other factor you have to realize is a lot of these ships, they have the propeller directing the flow right over the rudder. So if the propeller stops spinning, even if you turn the rudder over, you're going to have very limited steering. These ships are immense. The back of the ship will swing out first, directing the front of the ship where to go. So if even if the emergency generator enabled them to steer, it may not have been enough without the propeller spinning. Now, when the ship approaches the bridge... A lot of black smoke was coming out of the ship. Okay, what this possibly is, here's the problem. These large engines that are direct drive, they don't have any kind of transmission. If you want to put that thing in reverse, you have to literally shut that engine off. They adjust the valve train in the engine the systems that propel the engine are adjusted. The engine will actually run backward. What they do is they restart the engine. They And to be specific, they may not, in fact, have to change valves, the valve train position, or the fuel injection. This is a diesel fuel injected engine, direct injected. And I believe they may, in fact, be able to simply spin the engine over in reverse. They use compressed air to start these engines. So, yes, there, there must be a way that they can change the valving of that air starting system. They spin the engine over in reverse to restart it, running backward. So, as you can imagine, if this was running forward, and even if it stalled out, to get the thing started again running backward would be a major, you know, it takes a few minutes. you got to start this whole engine up in reverse. Then once it started, I assume all that black smoke, they were trying to get the thing to go in reverse as fast as possible to slow the ship down so it wouldn't crash into that bridge. That's what I believe was happening when you see all that black smoke coming out. So this is the way it works. Unfortunately, the price of this high efficiency limits the ship's maneuverability and response time. This could be solved by having a tug alongside the ship, a few tugs, in case there's a problem like this. That would be a precaution, but it costs a lot of money. And unfortunately, most of these container ships are built this way. They have the one engine and there's limited 
backup systems if something goes seriously wrong with the engine. Um, what I suspect happened is either an electrical cutout of that generator, the shaft driven generator cut out, or the entire engine cut out as they were approaching that bridge. And you have a, a tremendous amount of inertia with this heavy type of ship. It's not going to stop that fast. And it's just a tragedy what happened. There should be, you would think the bridge would have been a little more substantial, the basing of the bridge, in case you have a problem like this. But that bridge, that thing went down real fast. That It's amazing how the structure seems so weak. That's what caught me. So, the, anyway, guys, I tr like to do an update when I have news like this. I'm going to be doing more automotive stuff on my channel, more videos related to diesel cars, Benzes, stuff like that. So, consider subscribing. From time to time, I do a live stream of news events. Um, by the way, you can subscribe for free. There's no charge for this. I just do this as a hobby, and uh, I look forward to uh, new subscribers coming on board. All right, guys, I'll keep you posted if more information comes out about this.